Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking on a Led Zeppelin named puzzle, Battle of Evermore, uh, by Kuraban. Um, Kuraban has been a friend of the channel for years now. Um, and I remember when Kuraban got engaged, I think, uh, to Amanda, who is now Kuraban's wife. And I think they've been married for nearly a year. I hope I've, uh, I hope I've not got the dates massively wrong then. Uh, but anyway, Kuraban has, has, has been around now and following Cracking the Cryptic for a while. And this puzzle is, well, not only is it in that, I mean, look at the setup here. I mean, this is just, it's so clever. It's just a symmetrical array of these arrows in the middle and then some, uh, you know, the only thing spoiling absolutely perfect rotational symmetry it's an arrow on the side and an arrow down here. No given digits. I mean, it's a stellar. It's like a Catherine wheel. Um, and the testers love it. And I looked it up on Logic Masters Germany. And the comments are, one of the comments really struck me as, as what a beautiful compliment to a setter. And I think it was something like this. It said, this puzzle is just so easy to enjoy. And that is a lovely thought, isn't it? I'm sure it will be lovely to uh, lovely and very easy to enjoy. So this is what we're going to be having a go at. I think though it is four stars out of five for difficulty. So it might be quite tricky. There is a knight's move constraint I've spotted. So that can lead to all, all sorts of shenanigans in the grid. Um, and I don't have much news for you today. Uh, there was, oh, there was something I was meant to tell you. What was it? Oh no, I can't remember. I can't remember. Oh, I hate it when this happens. Um, well, well, just just as usual, if you enjoy the channel, please do subscribe. That's totally free, obviously. Helps teach the algorithm that variant Sudoku is a thing people love. Um, and you can also support the channel over on Patreon, which is a couple of bucks a month. And we have lots of extra content over there, including, of course, our monthly Sudoku hunts, which are very, very popular. Um, Got nothing else. Got nothing else. Let's have a look at the rules for the Battle of Evermore by Kuraban and see what we have to do today to finish the puzzle. We have got normal Sudoku rules applies. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Uh, digits along arrows must sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So imagine these squares are one, two, and three. One plus two plus three is six. So we would write six into the circle. And arrows are that simple. Um, uh, digits cannot repeat on the marked diagonals, so um, that means that this set of digits here has to contain a set of the digits 1 to 9 once each, and so does the positive diagonal. People sometimes ask, why is it called the positive diagonal and this is the negative diagonal? Well, it's because if you were to plot a graph of y versus x, this would have a positive gradient. Um, and this would have a negative gradient, and that is why this is the positive diagonal, and this is the negative diagonal. Um, and then, uh, then right, we've got digits separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So let's imagine the central digit is a one. If this is a one, then a chess knight could jump to all of those cells, and none of those cells could contain the digit one. That's how. Um, the anti-knight restriction, the so-called anti-knight restriction works. Do have a go. The way to play, as usual, is to click the link under the video. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking now. Um, I mean, there are, there are a couple of things I can see here straight away. I've, I haven't seen anything very clever though, so that is a little bit of a concern. Um, no, okay, I haven't, I haven't got anything clever, so I think I'm going to start by just, um, I've just seen another thing that's mildly clever. Uh, I'm going to start by looking at the three cell arrows, because all of the arrows, apart from this one, do have three digits on them that have to be different, in the sense those have to all be different digits. Now, we looked at this with the example 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, so we know that all of these arrows are at least six. And you can see that immediately gives us a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in the middle box. So one of these digits has to be a six, which means that one of these arrows is a one, two, three triple. 
right I've got one I've got a digit now but I, that, this wasn't actually the thing I'd seen I, I can get this digit the thing I was wondering about um, so I'll go back to my first thought which was to think about these two arrows together as a, as a unit if you like and the reason I think these might be interesting is that these five digits here all have to be different numbers so let's imagine we populate the purple cells with the lowest numbers we possibly could. These would be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in some order. And 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 add up to 15. That's the triangular number for 5. So we know that purple adds up to at least 15. Now if we make this as small as we can and make this a 1, that means that collectively purple and blue together add up to 16 at least. Now they could, the two green cells could be a double nine, couldn't they? So the maximum that these can add up to is 18, but we now know for sure they add up to at least 16, so they definitely don't include a six, because they can't be six and ten for obvious reasons. Um, right, now I can go further than that. They're now not seven, because we can ask where this digit is goes by Sudoku, or at least Sudoku-related trickery in box six, because this digit, it can't go um, in its own row. It can't go on its own arrow, because then the other two digits on the arrow would have to be zero. So it's not in any of those squares, and it's not by knight's move in either of these squares. So this cell is in one of these two positions, but it's a seven, eight, or a nine, so it definitely can't go on an arrow. Because if we did put this on an arrow, even if it was only seven, by the time we'd added two more digits to seven, even if those were one and two, this would be a double digit number. It would be at least 10. So those two are now the same. And because we know they add up to at least 16, they can't be seven because 14 is not equal to 16. It is less. There is a knowledge bomb for you. So these are either double eight or double nine. Now, if they're double eight, these are one, two, three, four, five. And that is a one. Um, oh, okay, and this is an enormous digit. It's an eight or a nine, so it can't go on this arrow. So that green digit now is in one of two cells over here. But <laughs> but let's go back to the other thought I had, which was thinking about that cell. So the reason I started to think about this cell was I realized that these squares, because these are all different numbers, one of these arrows, I don't know which one it is, but one of them is a six. So that's going to have, let's say it was this one. This is going to have a one, two, three on its arrow, isn't it? Now, one of these is a seven. Let's say it's this one. That's going to have one, two, four on its arrow because that's the only way of making uh, seven in three different digits. So now we can ask what the central digit is because by Sudoku, we know it's not six, seven, eight, or nine. And it sees one, two, and three on the six arrow, wherever that lives, in the sense that if this was one, two, or three, it would eliminate that digit. If Imagine this was one. You now can't put one on this arrow because it sees this one by Sudoku and these two by Knight's move, jiggery pokery. So that won't work. And the same is true for two. The same is true through for three. And because there's a seven arrow somewhere, the same is true for four as well. So actually, we can at this juncture write five into the middle cell of the grid. Now, now we can say some more things can't we whichever one of these is the eight arrow let's say it was that one that now can't be one two five so that's going to be a one three four arrow and then the nine arrow let's say that was the nine arrow the nine arrow can't have five on it either so that's either going to be two three four or it's going to be one two six uh, which means the nine arrow definitely has a two on it um, but the eight arrow doesn't. So I don't think there is. Uh, let's just think about that. In fact, if you don't mind, I'm just going to write down the options. I'm just going to imagine it's six, seven, eight, nine, like that. Just so, just so we can think about: Do we actually know the full panoply? No, we don't know this one, do we? If okay, if this was one two six, then we would know there were four ones on the um, on the thingy thingy uh, on, on the arrows here. Oh, this isn't Fistemafel, is it? 
Oh, it could be. Yeah, it could be actually. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let me. I'll think about that in a minute. I just want to think about what if this isn't one two six? Then it's two three four. So then all these digits are really minute. But there's still no. That's that's quite interesting as well. If you look at the panoply of digits, there are three ones, three twos, three threes, and three fours. If that's the case. Um, Yeah, there's one interesting thought I've just had. Um, I say interesting. I'm not actually. I must. I must delete those because we don't know what the order is. Uh, the thought was. Hmm. I don't actually know if this is going to do anything. So I never know whether to prove this or not. But th there is a, th a theorem in Sudoku. Um, which says that these 16 digits around the central 3x3, uh, around the central 3x3 box, are the identical 16 digits to those that you'd find in the 2x2s in the corners. Now, now we, we're getting close to knowing exactly what these, these triples are. So we're getting close to knowing what most of the digits in orange are by this theorem. But there is, a, there is a further point that interests me here, which is to do with the central digit of the puzzle. And there is an extension to this, this theorem that I've just drawn, which says that in a knight's move Sudoku, and in fact, it, this definitely applies here, in a knight's move Sudoku, or indeed in a Sudoku with both diagonals restricted, then if there is a digit that doesn't appear in this ring, that digit must appear in the central cell of the puzzle. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we know that because it's a knight's move Sudoku, we know that, that this five doesn't appear in any of those squares. But because it's a diagonal Sudoku, we also know it doesn't appear in these squares. So there is no five in the orange squares at all. And that's the only digit, that's the only digit that's not allowed to appear in the ring. I think I, yeah, I, I am just gonna, I'm just gonna trot through. I, I approved the first version of this in a number file video, if any of you are interested in. Um, Brady's channel which I certainly recommend but let me just I'll quickly let me just quickly th trot through the, the proof of this I'll, I'll delete the greens and reinstate them at the end um, so the way to understand Fistimafel is to highlight some things in the grid ah lost my army um, we'll highlight these cells uh, I can't remember which color blue um, oh uh, oh, I see. That's that's a remnant of the green. So these squares here are. We can describe the contents of the blue cells absolutely precisely. We don't know where the digits are within. You know, I can't tell you where the eight is within, or where the four eights are within the blue region. But obviously, this is a complete row of the Sudoku. This is another complete row. This is a complete box, and this is a complete box. So all together the blue cells must contain four sets of the digits one to nine because each row or box contains one set of the digits one to nine. Now I'm going to highlight something else. I'm going to highlight these squares in orange. Now, can we describe the total contents of the orange cells? Yes, that's four complete columns. So that's four sets of the digits one to nine as well. So the blue set of digits and the orange set of digits are identical. They, they each contain four sets of the digits one to nine. So what would happen if we were to remove this, what, this cell from blue and this cell from orange? What now can we say about blue and orange? And the key thing to appreciate is that we can no longer say uh, exactly what blue and orange cont contain because we haven't got a clue what this digit is. But we do know that they still contain the same thing. What remains in blue and what remains in orange must be the same because it was the same definitely before I took the same thing out of both sets. So blue and orange are still the same. I could take this one out. Blue and orange are still the same. I could take this one out. Blue and orange are still the same. And you can obviously repeat that 
for all the cells that have blue and orange in them until you reach this position, which is the Fistemafel theorem. So this tells you that these 16 digits or cells contain the exact same things to these two by twos in the corner. But, but we can go further than that in a knight's move puzzle. Uh, in fact, we might not even need to use the knight's move. We don't, I don't think we need to use the knight's move to complicate this. Let's just use the diagonals. So now let's imagine that there is a digit in this puzzle that is not in the ring. Where would it go? Let's delete the five for a moment. So let's just imagine theoretically there is no digit. There is a digit X that is not appearing in blue. Well, then we know from the Fistemafel theorem it's also not in orange. So in these corner boxes, it would have to live in these squares, wouldn't it? Well, now it doesn't matter which cell you pick. Let's imagine we pick, we decide it's in this one, this, this exact one. Well, then you can see it's going to be in one of those two. It's going to be in one of those two, and it's going to be in one of these two by Sudoku. And now ask, if that was true, where does it go in the, on the two diagonals? Because you can see in these corner boxes, it's never on the diagonal. So that means it has to be in one of those squares on the negative diagonal, and it has to be in one of those squares on the positive diagonal. And the only cell that meets both of those conditions is there. And it wouldn't matter if you didn't pick this one. If we pick this one, you can see the logic just is exactly the same. You, you just find that find the digit somewhere somewhere you know in a in another set of dominoes. So if there is a digit that's not in the Fistemafel ring, it has to be in the centre of the puzzle. We've already dis discovered that that digit is a five in this puzzle, and we know that five because of the knight's move can't go in the ring at all or in the in those squares. So there is no five in this puzzle. Definitely. Um, in these two by twos in the corner. But the corollary of that is there can't be another such digit. So it's no longer possible to say there's no nine in the orange cells. There must be a nine in the orange cells because if nine was not in the orange cells, it wouldn't be in the ring and that would force it into the middle, middle cell of the grid where there is a five currently living. And we're not going to put the nine in the same house. We put the five. So we have to actually now populate orange with some number of ones, twos, threes, fours, six, sevens, eights, and nines. But the, the, there is another thing that we can now think about, which is that, hmm, well, certainly for the, for the digits seven, eight, and nine, they have to live in the corners of this box of, of the Fistemafel ring. Because seven, eight, and nine can never go on a three cell arrow. Now the complicating factor here is unfortunately six can go. Because what I was hoping we might be able to say is that these were six, seven, eight, and nine. But that's not strictly true because imagine this was a nine arrow and it had a six on it then we have got a six into the ring. We know there's a six in the ring somewhere, but we've managed to put it on an arrow so it doesn't have to go in one of these corner cells. That's the only way you could get a six onto an arrow is to do that. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it means something, I'm sure. Uh, I can't use the fact there's no five on there, can I? because I know there's no five on there. I was just thinking about if what happens if those were double eight and these were one, two, three, four, and five. These couldn't be five. So there would have to be a five on this arrow. Oh, I don't I don't know actually. Ah, here's another point. Is that digit's low, isn't it? Yeah, that digit is low because that digit has to repeat. Ah, in fact, has, that's another interesting thought. Yeah, no, don't don't think to yourselves. I hope I never meet that guy at a party. That's that's what lots of people have had the experience of in their actual lives. Yeah, it never it never went well. They met me at parties. They fell asleep, and that was that. But 
<laughs> in the world of Sudoku, I could be really interesting. Look, this digit, we, we know those add up to a minimum of 15, don't we? And we know these add up to a maximum of 18 if they were double nine. So this can't be higher than three. And it must repeat here. Because imagine that, that this digit doesn't repeat, then the minimum sum of these is the triangular number for six, which is 21, and 21 is bigger than 18. So this repeats. It doesn't repeat in its own column, and it doesn't repeat there by night's move. So that digit is in one of those. Oh, this is getting really, really, uh, it's getting really difficult now, isn't it? So that digit, this digit, is in one of those two, and then it's up there. Because we don't know which one of these it's in, we can't use the knight's move to, to help us out. Ah, all right, there's a tiny deduction. That's not a six arrow anymore, because if this was a six arrow, that arrow would be one, two, three, and break that square. So that's now a seven, eight, or a nine. The six is in one of those two squares. Actually, I'm going to note that. Um, golly. Um, that digit's quite high now. When I, no, I mean, it's not very high, but it's at least four. Um, and the way I see that is that I know that, well, if, if you pick the biggest number this could be, which is nine, a nine always has to have two of the digits, one, two, and three on its arrow, because imagine it didn't, then the minimum it could be would be a one, four, and five, and one, four, and five is 10. So I know there's a one, two, there's two digits on here that are one, two, and three. Uh, so in effect, there's like a floating one, two, three triple in this row. So that square is at least a four. So it's four, five, six. I mean, this is a terrible pencil mark. Um, so that's at least a five, five. It's not five though. Okay, that's a high digit. It's not five by the diagonal. Right. Okay, I don't know what that means, unfortunately. Oh, I do. Oh, hang on, I did know those were the same digit, didn't I? Let's actually reinstall or reinsert that shading. And we know that digit is down there somewhere. God, this is very interesting. There's a lot going on here. Uh, these squares are one, two, three, and four, aren't they? Aren't they? Now, is there something, is there some implication for, I mean, this, if that was a six arrow, that would be one, two, three. Does that have any profound effect on anything? It might do. I don't really know what though. I know that these digits, four of these digits are definitely seven, eight, nine. Um, where, okay, where is the green digit on, on the positive diagonal? Because that cell is interesting, isn't it? It knocks it out of all of those three squares. That cell knocks it out of those three squares. So it is in one of those three squares. That's a surprise. Yes, yeah, so we can knock it out of this one as well. Because if it was here, Ah, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, this is great. No, this is beautiful. Good grief. Right, we can do loads of jiggery pokery. That digit cannot be green because it would knock green out of box four by, by the knight's move. So that's not green. Now, but let's, let's reverse that logic and look at these two squares. Can that be green? Well, then green couldn't go at all on the positive diagonal because of the knight's move. So this is not green, which means that is green. Uh, da, uh, um, right, that's eight or nine then. Is that enough? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not sure actually. I mean, it would. Have, well, would it be better if it's here or here? What you really want is this to be very low, then we'd know this was a low digit. 
think if that's nine, then there's, then this digit's not really under pressure. Um, okay, I'm not sure. Do I? I'm not. No, sorry, I've I've, I've hit a I've hit a brick wall here. Um, I am trying to understand. I think. Can we do more? Green can't go on an arrow, can it? So green is in one of those four squares in box. In box thingy, box eight. So green can't go there because that would knock both of those greens out. So green's now in three cells in box eight. It's, I think I'm grasping at straws a bit here, but knight's move puzzles are odd creatures and they can, well, that's indeed the original Miracle Sudoku show, they, they can do weird things. I can't see how to restrict this any further, mind you. Okay, what about the top? Is it the same? Well, we get the same four cells up there, but there's nothing, nothing to limit those in these boxes. What about this box? I've still got to put green on the positive diagonal. Oh, yeah, okay. And it, sorry, yeah, this is what we, we've already looked at this. What about green on the negative diagonal then? It's not there. Is there a reason it can't be in either of those squares? I don't think so. About green in this box, again, I, I just don't think this is going to be restricted enough. There's no arrows down here to help us. Green, green is a massive digit though, so green does have to go in a corner of this. Oh, imagine if I could knock green out of that cell. That would be great, because then I would know where green went in the corners of the Fistimafel ring, because green must appear in the corners of the Fistimafel ring, because it's eight or nine, and it can't appear on an arrow. So why can't that be green? That would be very interesting. If that was green, then that would be green. Green would be in one of these two. Green would be in one of those two. Green would be, where would green be in box three? Maybe here, not there, maybe there. Oh no, but okay, maybe exactly there then. I'm not sure, actually that's getting complicated. Let me just think about that again. So I'm trying to plot where green would appear throughout the grid. Actually, green would be there, I've noticed in row seven. So green would be, yeah, green would be here, which would make, so this, we, so if green was there, we could populate green everywhere. Yeah, we could actually populate it everywhere. Isn't that strange? Hmm, but if that's green, I know that, yeah, okay, if that's green, perhaps it's a lot less constrained. Okay. Um, do I have to abandon this then? It doesn't feel like there's nearly enough information here to finish this, does it? How on earth is this going to solve? I haven't got a clue. Uh, I must be... Uh, I must be missing something, I think. Maybe, do we know what the nature of this is? One thought I've just had, I was thinking about that digit, is that that digit, if we think about its location in this box, again, the knight is it, it's, it's going to get pushed into one of those squares. So we know that this corner digit is not yellow, and the same logic by symmetry must apply to this one. We're running out of good colours. We'll use red for this one. That must be, one of those must be red. So this corner digit, which we know is one of the coloured, one of the big coloured digits in box five, is either the green digit or it's that digit. 
Now, is there a reason it can't be that digit? I don't, I would doubt it, but I'm not certain. It gets really quite constrained, but I don't think it's impossible. Oh, hang on. Ah, may, maybe, maybe another way to think about it is where that digit is not six, is it? So that digit definitely has to find a home in one of the corners of the Fistemafel box, and it's not in either of those squares. So yellow, oh, it's a horrible pencil mark, but yellow is in one of these two squares. One of those two. And green, yeah, so green is in one of these two. And red is in one of those two. I mean, but I think this is just not doing anything. And that one, which we haven't awarded a color, we should really give this a color. Let's give this, or do I have to get rid of the Fistemafel ring? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get rid of the Fistemafel ring. I think I think we've, we've established the ideas, haven't we? we? We sort of know what we're heading towards. So that digit is in one of those two squares. Uh, got to, now I've got to give things a flash where I don't know where they go. They're, they're flashed. That's real. This needs to be flashed. There we go. Um, so now, one of these is six. Is there a reason? Is there a reason one of these can't be six? We know six is the most constrained. We know hardly anything about ones, two. Well, hmm, no, I don't think we do know. I really don't think we know very much at all about ones, two, threes. I know there's one of them in those two squares. Uh, okay, that's a small point. I've just noticed that digit there. That digit, if it was a one, two, three, or four, would have to go in that square in the middle box. That feels a bit interesting. So if that square was one, two or three, it would have to go there. Um, which is potentially of interest. Golly, I don't know what to do. Um, this is eight or nine. Does that help me? I know there must be another. There must be another low digit here. So there must be two low digits here, one of which is n not the low digit here. But it, it could be. It could be. An, I don't know. Sorry, I'm not seeing it, am I? I? I suspect the big game in town here is to somehow rule six out of the nine arrow. How do I do that? If this was the nine arrow and that was the six, then this would be a six. This would be a one, two pair. That doesn't seem to rule it out. Oh, it's not. I mean, it's not the knowledge, is it, that five five is always in one of these squares in the corner boxes by the logic that we looked at before i can't be that <laughs> can it there's so much heavy lifting that needs to be done by these side arrows and yet they don't seem to be big enough do they i mean that digit is i suppose what's the maximum size of that digit five so that's one two three four or five that's I mean, that cannot be important. Um, this digit can't go on its own arrow, so that is definitely in one of those squares. This one, two, three, and four. We know one, two, three, and four definitely appear a few times in the ring. We're not sure exactly how many times because we don't know the nature of the nine arrow. Although that is, I think, something I would love to know. Um, the 
the nine arrow is either a one, two, six, or a two, three, four. Now, if it's a two, three, four, we know that these corners are six, seven, eight, and nine. And we know and we know that the two by twos in the corners have to contain one six one seven one eight one nine. That's four digits, and then three ones, three twos, three threes, and three fours. But if the nine arrow is one two six, then we know there are four ones on the Fistemafel ring. So each arrow would then contain a one. And maybe that doesn't work for some reason. Is it impossible to put a one on all of these arrows? I don't think so, but I, I, maybe it is for some reason I don't understand. Is it then impossible to put a one into one of the middle cells of the grid? So if this is a one and there are ones on all the arrows, then that would be a one. That would be a one. Golly, it's very constrained. Oh, no. <laughs> you get that pattern. Oh, so you can. You absolutely can have four of the same digit uh, around the ring. And actually, that looked very nice, didn't it? That actually gave me a, a, a pattern that worked in the middle box. Well, at least so far as the digit that repeated on all the arrows were, went. Um... Okay. There's no pressure on this digit, is there? I'm running out of even ideas as to what to look at here. Oh, is it something to do with where this yellow digit goes in this box? It can't go on an arrow. And it's not equal to go. Oh, okay, here's a point. Ah! No, it doesn't quite work. All right, but... That's, that yellow digit is in one of those two squares in box uh, box six because it can't go on an arrow because it's too big. Now it has a really nearly interesting for this square, which is a dreadful pencil mark um, because I do know one of those squares is yellow, but I don't know which one. So I'm going to take that out. Now, can we do anything with that? Well, yes, I can do one. I can do one thing with that, bizarrely. That's weird. Right, where is yellow in this box? Yellow is not in its own column. I've got yellow here, so it's not in the corner. And that square can't be yellow by night's move. So yellow on the negative diagonal is up there somewhere, which feels like something I had no right to know. What does that do? <laughs> so yellow is seven, eight or nine. And it is in one of three places on that diagonal. So yellow in this box. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, so where's where's yellow in this box? I mean, that actually is probably a better question. Is It's definitely in one of two places, isn't it? So yellow in this box can't be there. Yellow is. Oh, Yellow is nearly, it's nearly getting forced. It can't be here by night's move. So it's nearly getting forced over into a very important position. Oh, that is it. I've got it. Right. So now this is brilliant, Kuraban. It's brilliant because now where's yellow in this box? And the answer is I've virtually got no clue. But yellow is seven, eight or nine. So it's definitely not on an arrow. Now it can't be the, these two squares either because that would rule yellow out of these squares. So it's in one of... Oh, no, it's not in its own row. So it's actually in one of two places. Oh, this is great. So now, now I know where yellow is over, over here. That knocks it. And where is it on the positive diagonal now? It can't be in either of those two squares by Sudoku stroke knight's move. So it goes in the corner. It can't be here. Um, because this would rule yellow out of those two squares. So yellow is yellow is there, which rules it out of here by night's move. So yellow is here. So it's yellow that was the key. I mean, oh, that's massive. Look at that. We've just got it. We've got a massive, massive digit on this arrow. 
Um, or it, this can't be nine anymore because it's on an arrow. But it definitely, we know it's seven or eight. So wherever yellow appears, it's seven or eight. And yellow is not there anymore. This is yellow by Sudoku. So that's seven or eight. And we must be able to do better than that, I suspect. Uh, yellow is in one of, oh no, maybe we can't. Okay, we've got an X wing of yellow left. But this is seven or eight. So this is now eight or nine. So this is definitely very low indeed. Uh, this is one or two. This is eight or nine, which look, makes it looks like it wants to be green. But maybe we don't know. Did I get any? Did I get anything else as a result of this being yellow? Have I have I stopped other things being potential green cells now? I don't think I have. Not sure. Um, I mean, no, that was what I was about to say was absolute nonsense. So we're not saying that again. Uh, perhaps it's something to do with. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're shouting. I feel, I feel people might be shouting at me now. There, okay, that is a 7 or an 8. So there is def. Oh, that might do something. There's definitely a 1 on this arrow now. So that's not 1. So, so now... Ah, this is good. No, this is great. Oh, this is... I tell you what, this is a brilliant puzzle. It's brilliant. Because now... Now I know something I didn't know before about these squares. I now know this is a nine. Um, because if this is two or three, remember that we said the triangular number for those squares was 15. We're now adding at least two to that, which is 17. So this can't be double eight. So that is double nine. Is that off? That's, off. that's my first digits. Double nine. So that's now nine. That still has every opportunity to be a nine. Um... And in fact, do I now know this is... No, I don't. I was about to say, do I know this is three? I don't. Because these could add up to 16. I'd be one, two, three, four, six. Um, but, okay, I do know one more thing, which is that these other arrows now have ones on them, don't they? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, hmm... I feel like that might mean something good. One in the... Oh no, because ones can go on the diagonals. I wondered if it might be where ones are meant to go on the, these diagonals. I can't put five in any of those squares. So, this, this nine arrow definitely has two on it, doesn't it? But that could be this two. Because it's either one, two, six, or two, three, four. And that's a nine. Do I have a way to know this digit? So this is either this arrow is either one, two, four, and that would make this a three. And actually we'd then know this was. We then know that this this nine arrow was one three five, or this is one three four. This is a two, and then I think all bets are off. Really. Oh yeah, one of these arrows is. Uh, no one one. I don't know. I want to know which one of these is six. that's six the only way this nine arrow could be one two six is if that's six I don't know I'm not sure um, 
Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, I've got it. I've got something. I really have got something. Okay, so remember we said that in the Fistemafel ring, it is necessary to put at least one of every digit. Where's the nine? Yeah, it's, this has been available ever since I got that this was a seven or an eight. The nine in the Fistemafel ring now can't go here or here because of this nine. It can't go there, so it must go here, which means that square is not right so th okay that's very important this is now an eight and that's a seven and that's a one and now we get the nature of yellow that could be that could be the puzzle whoopsie that really could be the puzzle because that's such an enormous breakthrough because now well now i know the nature of this arrow which is one two four which means this is three which oh, that's perfect because now this nine arrow has a three on it and a two so it's now two three four moreover we know this is a three being added to digits that can't add up to more than 15. So they are 15. This is a one five pair. That's, and we know the order, that's five, that's one. Now, where does five go in row four now? By Sudoku, it goes there, and that rules that out from being red. So red goes here. Red is, uh, now hang on, what is red? Because these are now a six, eight pair. So red, is, oh, that's it, <laughs> that's really clever. So red is six by the power of the cornered eight. So that's six, that's six, that's eight, uh, which means eight is blue. Um, that's six by a process known as Sudoku in some parts of the lands. This is eight by the process of Sudoku. Um, eight, now I was about to say something that's not right. My knight's move, my knight's move scanning let me down badly there. Um, all right, what does all this mean for this? Oh, well, we know now know this is the one, two, three triple, don't we? So we know that this is the one, three, four triple because the eight arrow can't have five on it. Now, and the nine arrow didn't have six on it. So we know we have to put six into a corner of the Fisto ring um, along with... Eight. Oh, where does eight go? Eight, eight can't go here. So that's got to be the eight. That's got to be the six. That gives us a couple more colored digits. And it might be the case that we're getting to a, a be Well, if that's nine, that's not nine by Sudoku now. Well, on, on the knight's move thing. And what else can we do? We've got one, five and nine to place in column seven so let's just plop those digits in and see if we know anything more as a result of that those two digits are a four eight pair oh and that's done so that's eight that's four eight is the blue digit we have to award it its proper coloring don't we so eight is in one of these two cells which uh, oh no it, no it isn't eight's not in that one because we already know eight is in one of these two in box two so that's eight eight is now here by sudoku how many eights have I got? I feel like I've got almost all of them. Uh, one more to place, which is in one of two places, of course. All right, but that's still good. Let's have a look at this column. Four, five, and six to place. Four, five, and six, four, five, and six. Now, what can we eliminate? It turns out absolutely diddly. <laughs> diddly squat. All right, let's have a look at this. Two, three, and nine. What about that diagonal? Or... Well, three comes out of this square. So two, five, and nine. Uh, yeah, two, five, and nine. So this is two or five. This is any of those, I think. I'm desperately looking for a knight's mill. All right, I'm going to try this column now. Two, four, six. Lots of even digits. Two, four, and six. What about the diagonal? Okay, now I'm starting to run out of steam now. We're going to have to, I think, use a bit more Sudoku. Wow, where's six in row seven? So that's six, that's five. So now this is not five. This is not five. This six turns red. This, this is now red by a process of Sudoku. Red in, red is, hit. oh, yeah, okay, that's okay. I was suddenly thinking that looks like it's definitely yellow, but that looks like it can have be yellow as well. So this is six because we can't put a six here by knight's move. So that, 
Oh, hang on. We need to put red six in here. We need to put seven in there by Sudoku. So let's get the colors right. That becomes seven now. That loses its color. It's coloring. And can we do all the sixes? Mm, maybe not, actually. I think I think we. Oh, I haven't checked the diagonals for sixes. Whoops. I want to I want to check the diagonals. Yeah. This diagonal needs a six on it, so we get six in the corner. So we get sixes into those positions. Let's fill those in, get rid of red in those squares. Have we got have we got all colours on all diagonals? Where's nine on the oh no. What about oh I don't know actually. Maybe I have. I don't think I've done nine on on the negative diagonal. That's not six anymore. Nine two four. It's getting this is getting properly pencil marked, isn't it? It's getting a good pencil marking. Right, these squares are two and three. So that squares a five, apparently. If I trust my pencil marks, I might as well. I'll risk it. These are a one four pair. So it's going to be something to do with the gaps on the diagonals. Yeah, that digit is one, two, three or four. Now, what does it see? It sees that one, but I don't know what that one is. Or we might actually have to, yeah, we might have to color the cells in the middle box. That's very possible. So, mm, I don't know. I'm not. I'm just not quite sure what the efficient way is of solving it, but I don't. I don't think we're far away. We'll just we'll just carry on plodding our way through it for the moment, and then five. Where is five? Yeah, we can do more with fives. Fives in one of those squares. Now that's the same squares. Look that I've got the eights penciled into. So this is a five-eight pair, and that's not five, and that seems to place five in column seven. How many fives have we now got? Several. Now, five in box eight. Can't be there by knight's move from here. Can't be there by Sudoku. So it's in one of these two squares, which places the five at the top, which gives me the eight at the top. Now, eight is the blue digit. So this is therefore the counterpart of that digit. That's no longer able to be blue. In this box, we've not put in three, five, and nine. Oh, Nitsa. Can we do that? That's definitely not nine. That's definitely not five. How do we deal with the threes? Oh, like this. That's a one, two, three, four quadruple. So there's no three in these squares. And that tells us the answer. Five, nine, three, three, two. Five, four, one, nine pair left in this row. So this must be part of a two, four pair. That still looks like it's working. The diagonal now has got a quadruple on it. So the corner square has to be high and is nine. That's two, that's three. Let's knock three out of these two squares. Knock. That's become a nine by Sudoku. That does the nine and the one at the bottom. I've now got a two, four pair in this column. I haven't put three in. So I put three in, that's a one, that's a one, that's a four. That square's known. I think it might be nine. Nine is green. Okay, that does make some sense, doesn't it? So that gives me a two here. <laughs> okay, and well, this would be good, actually, because it would mean I don't, ah, there's definitely a three on this negative diagonal, one of those, so I can knock three out of the other diagonal, uh, which I could have done using this. This one knocks itself out of those squares. That one knocks itself out of this square. And the one the one here gets placed. That's given me a four. Now. Okay. Let's see what that's done for the world. Is that done everything we need it to have done? Three knocks itself out of this one. Oh, okay, so where's three in this row? Doesn't seem, yeah, three, 
3 has only got one position apparently. Yeah, that is right. That's a 3. So that's not a 3. That's a 1, 2, 4 triple. So this is 3, this is 4. That 4 is huge because it knocks itself out of both of these squares. That becomes 2, that becomes 1, that becomes 4. That becomes 2. The 4 does this one. We're not, yeah, this is great because we're not going to need to do any extensive colouring now. We're basically, I think, just finishing off. That's 1, that's 2 by knight's move. That's 4, that's 2 by knight's move. That's 2. What a puzzle that is. That's brilliant. That was brilliant. So I needed a, quite a bit of theory to solve that. But that, oh, ah, ah, come back solution. I, I just wanted to do my colouring. 4 loses a colour, doesn't it? So 3... Oh, I suppose it was just there. Yeah, we'll, we'll uncolour that. We'll do all our nines in green because that was something that we were going to do. We'll do... Have we done all our sixes? Yes. Have we done all our nines? Yes. Have we done all our sevens? Yes. Have we done all our eights? I'm going to say yes. So hopefully this is right. Yes. You've solved the puzzle. Solve counter 112. Oh, it's quite an old puzzle. It's quite an old puzzle. I didn't know that. Well, it was brilliant. I, I don't know why this hasn't come to our attention before now, because it is a brilliant puzzle. I love the setup and it's so, well, it was so surprising to me at least that it was this digit that did the damage because it felt like this digit, the nine or what emerged to be a nine was the one that we could pinpoint them or we had the most information about, but it actually turned out to be that one. And I think when I finally had the thought about where this digit went in this box, and we could suddenly place it in an awful lot of places where it didn't seem didn't seem remotely possible we'd be able to. It's us really clever. That's a really good puzzle. Curaban, take a bow. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that. I am one of those people. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.